Hey, what's up? Who the hell just emailed me? And welcome to the effects breakdown video of the effects concept video I posted earlier last week. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, click the annotation on the screen. Watch it, like it, favorite it, subscribe to me if you're not already. And if you are already, do it again. Find a way. Uh, it's not exactly a tutorial, but I will be showing you step-by-step uh, step how I went about making that effect. But first, check my email. USC Ski and Snowboard video wrote, Can't wait. Well, you won't have to wait much longer because I am on it. Alright, first of all, to get the footage, I hacked into Abe's computer, uh, stole all of his videos, not really. I downloaded the Thanksgiving edit off of YouTube, and here is a single frame from the video where Abe would be uh, shoving his face into the camera in the foreground here, but uh, I painted him out because, I mean, who the hell wants to? Just kidding. But anyways, as you can see, I did a crappy job painting him out, but it's good enough to work. I did that in Photoshop, so I have a fake background, and the rest is in After Effects. What I did is I got the song I used, which is Pythons by Alphabet Zero. Yeah, I haven't heard of them either. I have a bunch of layers with the audio spectrum effect on it, which is in Effect Generate Audio spectrum, and each one of these represents a different frequency in the audio. So like here is some bass, here is some more bass, uh, these were dots which also were set to the bass, and here is more of the full where the bass is towards the left there and more of the treble and higher pitches to the right. So I got a bunch of those and I made an awesome audio waveform which it all automatically updates to the music like if I decided to move this track around it would automatically update and I will be making a another tutorial on how I made another video that you should have seen because you watch all of my videos right but anyways that video is just uh, the camera flying around some three-dimensional audio uh, spectrums and all good stuff so yes, I will be putting an annotation here eventually on a link to the tutorial to make a sexy audio spectrum effect. Unfortunately, it won't exactly be as sexy as Olivia Wilde in Tron, but speaking of having no friends, back to After Effects. Alright, so then I mirrored that in another composition. I took a uh, just a color spectrum here, set the transfer mode to color, go figure. Then I took another copy of it, set it to overlay just to make the color uh, stick out a bit more, make it more intense. Then here I have uh, just a photo of some concrete because that's what I do is I walk around taking photos of concrete. I have that set to overlay and duplicate it again just to give it some more texture. Good stuff. I have Abe rotoscoped out. I have that background plate uh, that I showed you in the beginning. And then I have this the audio waveform, just showed you that. And here I took a mat of his, or I made a mat of his visor because I don't want the audio waveform to be spilling off and like onto his helmet or into the scene or whatever. So I have the audio waveform set to an alpha mat that's just on his visor there. And so what I did to make it look like it was actually reflecting off of his visor is first I color corrected it channel by channel using uh, the levels adjustment here so you can see it looks a bit more color corrected and what I mean by channel by channel is I viewed only the red channel got that to match the scene then I went to the green channel here got the green channel to match and the same for the blue channel which pretty much already did match and then I used some curves just to give it a little more warm look because you can see a bit of a brownish red tint on his goggles there now to get it to bend around to actually look like it's uh, reflecting off of his 
visor, I use the liquify effect, and once that loads, like 10 years from now, then I have it to where you can see the mesh to see how it's uh, distorting it. In addition to that, one other thing I did to make it match is uh, I got a copy of his visor here, and then I set that to a Luma mat of the audio waveform. Uh, the reason I couldn't use an alpha mat is because I would have to use a black background here, because without the black background I get all this madness and don't quite, not quite going for that look. Anyways, so I used the Luma mat for uh, another copy of his visor, and I set that to soft light. So you can see the scenery in his visor, like this guy, is uh, showing up on the audio waveform. And as you can see, that alone looks like that. And I will be shutting all of this off so it renders a bit faster, because it's pretty hard to preview all of this madness at once. Except for that. Alright. So now what I have is Abe cut out with the audio waveform, just pretend it's there. I have the background with him painted out, and so I set those two up in three-dimensional space. Here's the fake background, and then here's Abe again, pretend that the waveform is on his visor. And as you can see from the top view, I have it in 3D space, and the camera here just pans uh, back and forth. Back to the active camera, so you'll see here it just moves a little bit. And at the bottom here, I have the original video footage fades in here, pauses, that's where you're going to see the camera pan back and forth, and then eventually resumes again. What that looks like is pauses and jumps to the three-dimensional layers, then you'll see the audio waveform doing its dance on his visor, and then fades back to the video. Now, in the first and third examples, you'll uh, see that I have the audio waveform also in the middle ground, which is uh, set just in between Abe and the background, as you can see right there. And uh, since the background is pretty bright. What I did for that one is I just used levels to darken it and then I tinted it. Now as you can see I have the audio waveform, good stuff, and so on. Again I will shut that off just because it's taking a while to preview. To get the transition I used uh, the Video Copilot Twitch plugin and uh, Right now I don't have it enabled, but what I did is I enabled uh, the slide and I set RGB split to be on. And so, again, right here, video it jumps to the uh, 3D, and here with Twitch on, look at that, the keyframes are perfectly lined up, go figure. Right here, video spazzes out like crazy, then have your 3D pan, spazzes out again, keeps going. Now, I highly recommend getting this Twitch plugin. It's a, a great deal from Video Copilot for only $45. If you don't feel like paying $45, maybe you can find Andrew Kramer, hold him at gunpoint. I mean, until he offers you it for free. And uh, that way you only have to buy a gun and risk going to prison instead of paying $45. It's a good deal. There is a way to make an RGB split and have it shake as well uh, without buying the Twitch plugin. It takes a bit longer, but I do have a tutorial on how to do that, so you can check that out. Twitch, good stuff. And again, pretend the audio waveforms are there. Twitch again, and yeah. Now for the third example, the third example is exactly like the first example, except I took two more copies of it, and uh, first I tinted it, I crushed the uh, mids and the blacks, and I brought up the lights a bunch, and I tinted it to red, and I did the exact same for blue, 
then I put that over the base footage. I offset each one of them. Uh, I put the blue five pixels to the left and the red five pixels to the right. Set the transfer modes to add and then I got a pretty neat glowing kind of effect. And uh, that was the only difference between that effect and the other two. So that's pretty much all I did there. I would come up with something conclusive to say about all of this, but I'm too lazy to do that. Be sure to check out Abe Keslevitz's channel. He indeed did do the original filming for this shot. So be sure to subscribe to him, check out all of his videos, but more importantly, subscribe to me, check out all of my videos. Just kidding. Uh, feel free to stalk me on Twitter, feel free to stalk the USC Ski Team on Twitter, and on Facebook. So, good stuff, and I will see you next time.